It's warm and humid in here. It's a chaotic day in the butterfly chamber. I blame the full moon. It's a tight space to work in, in the back. So I've got to be a bit careful as I'm taking these out because the wings are wet for up to a day and they can still be deformed. This one didn't work so well, didn't emerge properly. So it's a critical time that first 30 minutes or so, if they don't get their wings straightened out by all of the blood, they're pumping into them, and the wings are pretty much stuck that way. But unfortunately, some of the butterflies that emerge in here have permanently deformed wings, which means that they're not going to fly very well. Insects have a pretty complex life cycle, where they have these four stages that they go through, and there are massive changes that occur in between each. There's a lot of chances to go wrong. They can be deformed, and they can die at any of these stages, so a lot of it is from predation, and this is one of the reasons that most insects lay lots and lots of eggs, because chances are those eggs will be eaten. Of the ones that hatch, many of those caterpillars will be eaten by predators, and then of course even once they make it to the pupil stage, because it's such a complex developmental process, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. A parasitoid is usually a wasp or a fly that will lay its eggs inside of a pupa. These eggs hatch on the inside of the pupa. The larva feed internally on the poor little butterfly inside. So that ends up killing the butterfly, unlike a true parasite, that's what we call them, parasitoids. And it's one of the many, many dangers that are out there uh, for these tiny insects. Our pupae are protected from most of those dangers, so I like to think of it as a really lovely retirement home for butterflies, some place where they can live out their lives in peace and have plenty of nectar to drink. This is how many adults we have so far today. Go to the greenhouse right now. Get their muscles warmed up. They don't produce their own heat, you know? They do have muscles. But since they have an exoskeleton, it means their muscles are attached to their skin, basically. They have little projections coming off inside of the, the exoskeleton. Yeah, they have a surprising number of muscles. Hundreds. They don't really warm up as they use them, so they have to take the warmth from their environment in order to be able to use them efficiently. So that's why you see butterflies basking. This is the warmest day I've been here so far, so it makes a big difference for butterfly activity. Yeah, I guess some people like to let the eager on their own time, a little less patient. I shoo them out. Yeah, the past couple of times that I've done this, there have been maybe a dozen that I took to the pavilion. Welcome to the retirement village. We hope you enjoy our nectar selection. Retirement village is looking pretty good today. Well, it is warm, that is for sure. Just another day doing butterfly duty. Would you prefer if we had a beetle pavilion? Well, you know, that would be pretty cool. They would mostly be sedentary and hiding themselves, and it would be a niche market. I have definitely seen it before where large scarab beetles might be hanging out at some fruit. Larger beetles that get reared. Rhinoceros beetles types. How crass. Isn't it?
the sellout beetles. Yeah. Well, the kind of beetles that are my favorite would fit through the mesh. <laughs> so that would be difficult.